Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of the I Dive. This podcast bridges the knowledge gap between students and industry professionals by engaging in some meaningful conversations. Our questions come from students seeking to learn more about how one would go about making the transition post grad as seamless as possible. Today, we have Christina Bondi, a 2019 MI alumni in the culture and technology concentration at the I School. As a fun fact, she also took all the courses for the LIS concentration as well. <laughs> Christina is currently a Communications and Information Management Officer for Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada, while simultaneously working part-time in storytelling and design for the Federal Youth Network. During her days at the faculty, she completed a practicum at a boutique PR firm called Mate PR. In her final summer graduating from the program, she transitioned to a remarkable internship with CIBC as an information security coordinator. Prior to the faculty, she completed her honors bachelor's of arts at the University of Toronto's Victoria College in classical civilization, literature, and critical theory, as well as semiotics and communication studies. With her interdisciplinary background, she brings a unique voice in sharing knowledge here today. We thank you so much for your support and time in helping our student community learn from your stories and reflections. Episode five of the iDive features Christina's experiences in culture and technology and beyond the iSchool. Let's give a warm welcome to Christina. And Christina, can you start off by giving a brief intro about yourself and your story? For sure. Hi everyone, um, I'm Christina. Um, I'm a federal public servant uh, working within the realms of communication, information management and design. I'm currently living in Ottawa. Um, my academic background prior to the Faculty of Information, um, specializing in culture and tech, I did classical civilization, literature, critical theory, and semiotics. Um, I'm also currently a part-time um, student um, doing two certificate programs. Um, so I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, how do you do it all? That's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Um, sounds like you're someone who likes to love learning and keep on learning even post-grad. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's dive right into it. What kind of work are you responsible for in your current role? And could you tell me a little bit more about your day-to-day? -day? Yeah. Um, well, in my current role um, as a communications and I am officer, I do a lot of ad hoc um, communications work. So I create different comms products like uh, presentation slides, uh, dashboards, um, even infographics. Um, I was also leading a large project that just recently wrapped up actually to redesign my branches um, internal web pages. That was a really fun project. I really enjoyed that. And then in the federal government, there are many ways to get involved on a temporary and part-time basis. So I'm also doing a part-time micro mission um, with the Federal Youth Network. Um, and I basically help out with designing uh, social media graphics, newsletters, and also their wiki pages there. You sound like a one woman show. Like I love how you have so much diversity in your role. That's awesome. What would you say is like your favorite part of your role? Hmm, my favorite part, um, I mean, I really enjoy um, talking with people. I mean, being a communication specialist, that's part of my job, but um, the nature of the project that I was doing um, and also designing different products, I get to work with um, some amazing people. Um, and, you know, when I set up meetings, when I get to chat with people, even virtually, I get to learn so much and I'm, I'm within a branch that's um, fairly technical and I don't come from a technical background. So I'm always ready to learn, to explore. Um, so, you know, I always try to give um, folks opportunities to tell me about what they do and, and really explain it to me. I feel like tech is a space where you just got to keep on learning because everything's innovating all the time. And you can barely keep up, but at the same time, it's so cool because it's just expanding day by day. Yeah. How do you continue to learn post-grad? Tell me more about that. Well, even when I actively tell myself that I, I need to take a break from school, um, I always end up going back. Um, I, I went back for my master's after my undergrad, just directly afterwards. Um, 
And um, even now I'm doing two part-time certificate programs. So for one program, I'm learning how to teach um, English as a second language, um, just because I really find it interesting. And um, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Um, and then in the other program, um, I'm learning about online course um, uh, design and delivery. So I'm learning how to make online courses. Oh, that's so cool. I love how you're not even learning about anything. You're learning about how to learn more and how to like build more knowledge and kind of share that knowledge with others. It's really admirable. What kind of got you into wanting to go down that path and learn more? Where do your passions come from for English and teaching? Um, well, yeah, that, that usually, that, um, that comes from my mom. Um, she um, is a teacher. She, she has been a teacher for many years. And um, I've just always been so interested in, in what she does. And she's very passionate um, about her job. And I always got to see her every day, wake up, um, and really be excited to, to go to work. Um, and I do enjoy working with, um, with people, uh, whether it be children. I even enjoy teaching um, uh, adults as well. Um, it doesn't really matter. And if it's about a subject, a topic that I'm really passionate about, I just think it would be an incredible experience to be able to um, speak with people, learn from them as well, and so it's more of an exchange. Um, I think that would be a great experience. I love the way you ended it with saying exchange because I think knowledge exchange is one of like those things that you just have to keep going with and growing with through conversations, like even this conversation here today. I feel like it's such a valuable space to just learn so much from other people and their experiences. So thank you so much for sharing that. And also shout out to your mom for instilling principles <laughs> of lifelong learning. I really admire that. Thank you, Christina yeah. Small. <laughs> um, so I do want to ask a couple of questions that came out from our students, and one of them is on interview experiences. Um, reflecting on your own interview experiences, can you share how students can best prepare themselves for interviews for co-ops or internships, practicums, post-grad? What have you learned in your journey that you'd like to share? Yeah. Um... Well, I definitely think um, it's important to um, research the department, the company, wherever it is you're applying to, um, and come into the interview with some relevant thought-provoking questions. Um, so many interviews um, uh, will likely conclude with, um, so do you have any questions for us? Um, that, that dreaded question, it, it always makes my heart pound. So. Um, <laughs> I can definitely relate. Um, but if you have, you know, two to three questions um, planned ahead of time, you'll be ready and confident to just tackle that part of the interview and, and really impress the interviewers. Um, something else that I've also been experimenting with, um, because again, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new to the professional world as well. So um, I don't have a ton of interview experience. Um, but, but something that I recently experimented with is as you introduce yourself, um, talk about how you see yourself, who, who you think you are. Um, so your mission and, and, and your values as well. Um, I find that it, it makes the experience a little more um, personal, more human, and it gives you a little bit of a, like a storytelling edge, which is great for comms. <laughs> My God, I love that advice because it's like meshing the profession, professional and the personal and finding that concert between the two, like the joint union. Mm -hmm. um, can I like probe a little bit more on that? How have you used your own personal narrative with your work and like that storytelling approach? Yeah, um, well, I definitely had to think about how how I see myself, which has always been really complicated. I mean, we don't go around every day just telling people who we think we are. Like, that's a really big and loaded question. Um, but how I, how I saw myself, um, and, you know, this can definitely relate to a lot of uh, faculty of information students as well. Like, I saw myself as someone who was trying to make information 
accessible. Um, and my mission was to share information in an engaging way. And so I kind of, um, I kind of, I kind of word it like that um, as part of my mission. And then I also connect it to um, my interests in communications and then also education and teaching. And so I kind of created a bit of um, like a triad of sorts of, of all my favorite things basically that when you put them all together, it would equal me. <laughs> God, I feel like everyone needs to write that down, make a triad of who you are and then show yeah. that at the interview and then just show how it all kind of fits together. Perfect key tip. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. Um, what you were saying earlier about questions to ask at the end of the interview, is there any you remember that you asked that you think were good questions or you've heard before? Um, well, if it hasn't been covered already, like I would definitely ask what the dynamics are. Um, within the space um, and the, I guess the working style, the learning style. So is it more of like an agile approach? Um, is it way more collaborative or are people kind of doing their own thing? So I would definitely ask about the dynamics um, of the space. Um, another question. Hmm. Like sometimes I'll ask um, like if they have any advice for somebody coming into um, a role like this. Um, I think it's just a kind of a great learning opportunity as well. So even if you don't end up getting the job, you kind of get a little nugget of wisdom out of it as well. Um, but when you do research um, about the company, about the department, um, it's great to ask those really like specific questions um, um, and kind of stump them in a good way. Like I've, I've had that once or uh, once before. And um, at first I was like nervous because I, I thought like I stumped them and I thought, well, oh, I'm not going to get the job now. Like it's over. But they actually really, really liked that. And they thought it was um, very thought provoking and they had to take the time to actually think it through. Like they didn't get a question like that. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a prime tip I'm going to hold on to. And thanks for that question on agile versus collaborative processes. I don't think that a lot of people understand what it means to get into the full time workforce and these different working styles or environments. So I think that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, now I'm kind of like feeling like you read my mind because the next question is working with technology. It's known to be a highly collaborative role. What are some tips you have for building rapport with colleagues in the office? Well, um, since we're now working from home, um, there are a lot of great digital tools um, that um, I've been using that I find really help um, maintain communication and connections um, like Slack and, and Microsoft Teams. Um, I'm finding that with um, MS Teams, I'll, um, I'll usually turn on my video um, rather than keep it off and just have my audio, um, just so that you can connect more with the person or the group of people on the other end. Um, and it makes it feel a little bit more like an in-person meeting too, which I really miss. <laughs> um, and there also seems to be um, more small talk um, before meetings now that um, we're using MS Teams, which is great. Um, Slack, I find is just so convenient. Um, especially since I just have it connected um, to my phone, like my personal phone. So I can get and send messages just really quick um, to my teammates. Um, for email, I'm that person that likes to add exclamation points and smiley faces when appropriate, of course. Um, I find that it just adds a little more of a personal and kind of positive touch. Um, and I usually like to kind of conclude my emails with something, you know, pleasant, like, you know, have a, have a great day, have a great afternoon. Um, and I know it's small, but I, I, I do hope that it puts a smile on, on someone's face when they read it. So just little small things like that, um, you know, while we're working remotely, um, just to kind of maintain those connections. Oh, I, I absolutely adore that. And I am totally on the same page with you. I think when I messaged you, it was smiley faces and exclamation points all the way. So thank you so much for 
bringing that to industry and sharing that with other folks. I really appreciate that. Um, on that friendly note, how about the other side of things? So if you're working on a project and someone doesn't agree with your idea, how do you keep that friendly tone going? Um, well, if there if there is a disagreement, um, um, I would talk to them. Um, and I find that it's better to do it um, just the two of you instead of kind of call them out in a, in a big group meeting or something. So if it's just you kind of face to face um, and then try to better understand why it is they feel that way. Um, so it may actually be that they have um, another idea that's great and maybe it may even, it, it may even be better. <laughs> so uh, we can figure out a way, you know, through communication, how um, we can incorporate, you know, either some aspects of both ideas or come to an agreement on um, which one is better and which one we should uh, implement. I love that. I feel like that's such a great problem solving approach because you're kind of taking it behind closed doors and just having that intimate connection and going out with the other person. Have you ever had one of those experiences you'd want to speak to? Um, I, I honestly have had really great experiences so far. I mean, I haven't had um, I haven't had an instance like this when someone has really disagreed with an idea. Um, like especially in team meetings, I I always enjoy when they're very open and teammates can just um, share different ideas, no judgment, um, just part of that collaborative and I and again kind of agile um, space and approach. Um, yeah, but you know if there is a, a little bit of a of a disagreement, usually um, I'll, I'll probe a little bit more. I'll I'll learn more. And then usually there's like a compromise made and, you know, I don't, I don't take things personally, so. Awesome. Um, so then can you tell me a little bit about your problem solving approach? If say a disagreement doesn't come up, but there's a problem at hand, how do you go about solving it with that collaborative group? Um, well, if there is a problem um, that comes up um, with something I'm working on, um, like the, the first thing I'll do is, um, I'll take a breath, um, because, um, uh, in times like these, um, I tend to panic or I tense up. Um, but then after you kind of calm yourself down, um, if it helps, I'll do research. So I'll look into and understand different potential options, um, that I, um, and avenues I can take. Um, and so I kind of lay them all out, figure out what would make the most sense for me and be the most effective in my case. Um, and a lot of the time I'll turn to a group. So I will ask um, a colleague, um, you know, one or more um, for their opinion. Um, because sometimes talking to someone can help with your thought processing and um, they may actually spot something that you're actually missing or suggest something that wasn't even on your radar. So yeah, definitely um, um, talking with people and asking for their thoughts um, is something I definitely recommend. <laughs> that first piece you said that you just like take a breath, I feel like so many people can relate to that because when you get hit with a problem, especially like a work problem, and I guess you're going post-grad, you're not really used to this if you've been in school for your entire life. Yes. Like, I feel like it could be really stressful. And the fact that you're just coming at it with saying like, I just breathe and I find a way to go about problem solving. I talk to other people, I ask for help. I think that's just like so admirable. And thank you so much for sharing that and that like, fumbling on my words but i'm trying to say that it's really relatable and i feel a lot of people are going to go through that post-grad so can i ask you a little bit more on that because i think it shows emotional intelligence and i'd like to know more about how you find emotional intelligence works with your line of work um well again within communications you are working with um many different people um many different teams on different projects um 
Um, I lead a lot of meetings. I, I, I lead working groups. So um, you are working with people that come from different backgrounds, have different perspectives, different experiences, and you need to try and find a balance. So I, I, always, I always try to find a way to make sure that um, everyone's voice um, is heard. Like anyone that wants to participate and, and provide feedback, I always try to give that opportunity. Um, that's why um, I, I always um, try to schedule meetings um, so, we can, so we can talk. And it's a little bit better than a lot of email back and forth, I find, um, um, because things can kind of get lost in the shuffle and, um, I find that you can just get a lot more done. And again, it's more personal when you um, have like a video call or, you know, back when we're in the office, you do kind of an in-person meeting. Um, so yeah, just really trying to understand people and give them um, a chance to, um, to share. I feel like that is prime like COVID tidbit of knowledge right there. Cause it's like, you're going to be working online in the foreseeable next year, probably like yeah. schedule a video call to get to know someone and just have that chat. Um, can you tell me now if we shift gears into your industry, how do you stay up to date on new trends and what's going on? Um, well, um, I did mention this before, but because I'm in a fairly technical branch, I actually don't know quite a bit um, um, about the work um, that my colleagues do. Um, but I was, I was, uh, I came on board um, to kind of articulate what it is um, the branch does and, and create a very clear narrative. So in order to do that, Honestly, I had to really understand what each of the divisions, each of the teams really did. So I find that I learn so much from conversations that I have with, um, um, with different groups, with individuals. Um, and I've, um, I found that um, a, uh, an incredible experience and I'm still learning. Um, I love learning. Um, and there's also, um, internal communications uh, within my department, or there's also communications within the federal government too, um, more generally that I find um, quite informative and engaging. I love that it keeps going back to that conversational piece and just getting to know more people and getting to know more about that learning. So oh, I just love that. <laughs> Um, on your aspect of like one of the favorite things you love to do, I know learning is one of them. What about some of your favorite projects? Can you describe some key skills you found useful for them? Yeah, well, um, um, as a part of my part-time micro mission, um, I was part of the planning um, and promotion of a very large government-wide event. Um, it was a career development and learning event. And it was just such an incredible experience. I, I learned so much. I worked with so many great people um, and I was able to see it really come all together. Um, but because there were so many moving pieces, communication amongst um, the team was just so important. Um, we emailed each other, we, we slacked each other. We had many video call meetings. Um, to just keep each other up to date and discuss kind of priorities for the day, um, especially as we got closer um, to the event, to the conference. Um, and also adaptability um, was another key skill. Um, so I could be working on one thing, but then something else comes up that's more important and it needs to be completed ASAP. Um, so you, you need to be able to switch gears quickly and um, be able to just tackle that. Awesome. I love how those soft skills are really kind of coming into play with your career. And I find that adaptability is one number one that you need to have tattooed across your resume and across those cover letters. Uh, do you want to speak to an experience where you had to be adaptable or anything along those lines? Um, well, adaptability, I mean, I experience it um, Oh, almost every day. Um, I could be working on something, um, a project that's a little more consistent, um, and then something comes up 
um, and I need to just leave that because it's not as urgent and um, and take on the new task. Um, but um, I find that exciting. Um, I'm, yeah. Um, uh, even though I, I I am kind of a nervous person, um, I also really like to be busy. Um, so, you know, even if I'm doing a couple different things at one time, um, I find it very, very thrilling, um, very uh, mentally stimulating. <laughs> Oh, it's that race of knowledge. I feel like with all the learning going on, you just want to keep <laughs> absorbing as much content as you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so can you tell me one myth about your industry that you would like to debunk? Yeah, um, this is this is a bit of a, of a tricky one. I mean, I guess a myth about communicators or the communications field more generally. Um, is the kind of personality. Um, so, you know, a common, a common stereotype, I guess, is a communication specialists are super extroverted and they love socializing. Um, and, you know, in some cases it may be true. Um, um, you know, some communications folks may be quite extroverted. Um, and for me personally, I'm, I, I like to, I think of myself as a bit of a contradiction. Um, I mean, I, I am more introverted naturally. Um, I'm a little more reserved. I'm a little more socially awkward. Um, but at the same time, I love, I love getting involved and I really enjoy um, talking to people. And even if it may be kind of nerve wracking for me, I almost kind of force myself like into these situations um, you know, just coming into it very positive and just with that, again, that perspective to, to, to learn from them. And it doesn't need to be an intimidating situation. We're just having a conversation. I love how, I feel like I've just loved so much in this conversation, but honestly, <laughs> like, I love how raw and real you are with how you feel when it comes to conversations and how you kind of bring that into pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. I feel like that's like an invaluable trait that everyone needs to adapt and have that mindset towards. I think you make this world a better place. So thank you. Um, um, can I ask you now about your career? Can you tell me more about opportunities for growth? Do you think it's horizontal or vertical? Yeah, um, I mean, there within the government, there are just so many opportunities to grow um, and develop, um, especially horizontally. Um, there are, you know, more temporary moves, like you can do an assignment or a secondment, um, or there's more permanent changes, like a, you can do a deployment. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, there's also options to do micro missions, um, and, and I'm doing mine part-time, so that's also an option too. So I have my full-time role, and then I also do part-time work um, with the Federal Youth Network. Um, Vertical opportunities um, like promotions. Um, so if you want to move up in a classification, um, they, they are more structured. So there is a process um, that involves, you know, applying for, you know, a specific job or um, applying to qualify in a pool. Um, um, but at the same time, you can also gain um, some experience in a different classification doing an acting opportunity. So um, there's, there's so many different options um, to take advantage of, um, but you do need to be active. I feel like you embody that proactive approach so well. So uh, can you tell me something that you know now about this aspect of your career that you wish you knew about earlier? Um, um, something I wish I knew earlier. Um, well, I would say um, kind of going back to um, taking an active approach. Um, when you get the job, um, the hard work, it, it doesn't stop there. Like if you want to grow your career, advance your career, you need to um, 
look into these different opportunities, do research, um, get involved and network. Um, and um, when you apply to different opportunities, persevere. So um, something that I learned um, at, after starting um, um, as a professional, I guess, in the real world um, was that, um, you know, you, you got the job, that's fantastic. But from there, where do you see yourself growing um, and, and where do you want to be um, in, for example, five, 10 years and, and, and how can you get there? Well, speaking of five to 10 years, how do you hope your career will grow in the next five to 10 years? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really have like a clear answer for that, but I would definitely say, um, if it's kind of bringing together, you know, my passions, so communications and education, um, I think that would just be in incredible and just very personally satisfying. And um, if I one day um, had the opportunity to um, teach um, courses, um, like at a university or college level, like that, that would be the dream for me. <laughs> my god i would love to have you as one of my professors please <laughs> follow that passion and come back to school um, what are you thinking about saying to someone who might want the same career path that you're kind of aspiring towards what advice would you give to them um well if you're thinking of um, a communications career um, in the federal government um, mm -hmm. one piece of advice um, that I would definitely give is um, learn French. Um, um, it, it may not be as relevant um, uh, for provincial government jobs, um, but yes, if you, if you do wanna move to Ottawa or Gatineau and, and get a federal um, government um, job uh, posting um, as a communications specialist, especially, um, it's just a great skill to have. Um, I'm currently taking um, intermediate French classes um, because I, I, I know it's just, it's, it's really important. Um, for um, advice, just for comms in general, I would just say like, there are so many different avenues you can take within comms and, and you don't need to limit yourself to just one. Um, you don't need to be stuck in, in one kind of subcategory of comms. So just try a few out. Um, don't be afraid to take these different opportunities and you know from there you can see which one um, speaks the most to you and you know where you where you'd like to stay for you know the rest of your career there's time oh my god that just gave me such like a breath of fresh air like there's time it's good to know that there's time that you can kind of find your way and also hold up you're taking french classes doing a part-time <laughs> thing with the unit. I have a full-time job with the government and two courses on the side. Like, can I have your brain? Oh, it's a very disorganized one. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to make it work and that's really admirable. So thanks so much for sharing that. <laughs> Do you have any time to read books, podcasts or anything along the way that's helped you that you'd like to share with other folks? Um. Yeah, with that, like, I would say, in my free time, um, when I do have free time, I usually <laughs> I usually like to read fiction. So I studied classical civilization in my undergrad. So I, I really enjoy reading classical reception novels. So I would just I would just say read, you know, read about you know whatever interests you. It doesn't have to be something specific to your field. If, if that's what you don't want to do in your free time that's totally fine like you don't need to be on 24 7 like trying to you know ad advance yourself or you know work on yourself professionally you know there is definitely a time and space for that but if you're looking to just kind of unwind and you know find some peace um just just read something that really speaks to you that excites you so these, these particular books bring me peace and I really um, enjoy learning about different people, you know, even if, you know, regardless of if they're historical or mythical and, 
you know, from different time periods. Um, and of course, you know, reading fiction can still tell you a lot about what makes a good story. Awesome. Wow, I feel like that was such a great way to kind of just wrap up our formal questions. And I find that, you know, we need to have a little fiction in our lives all the time because you can't be too serious. You just got to do life. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're kind of coming to an end. So I'm going to go into this fun little rapid fire session round where it's going to be maybe two minutes max. Um, we're going to give you a few prompts. And if you could tell us a few fun things that come to mind as soon as we say them, really appreciate it. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> okay, the first one, you're going to love it. Learning is? Lifelong. Cyclical. Awesome. Innovation is? Iterative. Success is? Joy. <laughs> and what about failure? Learning. <laughs> and what's something people often get wrong about you? I'm shy. Um, I come across as reserved, um, but it just takes me a little bit more time to think of a response. Yeah. Empathize and relate, but <laughs> next, yeah. um, what is one thing you're really excited about? Um, well, in Ottawa, um, non-essential services opened up, so I'm looking forward to going back into a restaurant this weekend. <laughs> Oh my God, that is exciting. That's very exciting. <laughs> Hope you have an awesome meal. Um, what is one piece of advice that's so awful you need to warn us against it? Um, I mean, don't let anybody tell you that hard skills are more important or better than soft skills. Um, um, soft skills are more difficult to teach. Okay. And what is one of your biggest pet peeves? Email ghosting. <laughs> I have been guilty of that. <laughs> what is one thing you're most grateful for? Uh, the people around me. Yeah. Love that. And what, how would you describe yourself in one word? What would it be? Imaginative. Okay. And what's one song you can't live without? Um, Bridge Over Troubled Water by Son Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> gonna listen to that right after. <laughs> um, what's the last book you read? Um, I recently read um, A Hamnet and Judith by Maggie O'Farrell. Nice. And how do you manage stress? Um, I run, I play with my cat, Floof. <laughs> and what's worth the risk? Opportunity. Okay. And last but not least, what are you going to do right after this podcast? Hopefully homework, but uh, <laughs> most likely uh, watch TV. <laughs> Love it. A way to learn or be imaginative both together. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Well, Christina, that wraps up our session here today. I just wanted to thank you so much for your insights. And I'm sure many students, including myself, will find these insights very valuable in sharing the knowledge that was exchanged here today. We're so grateful for your time. And who knows, maybe you'll be back one day as a professor. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.